Um, I want to ask you about um, some of the other deals. You've been involved in a real estate um, venture to buy homes in Detroit. And I, that's when Fikes Tune, who started uh, covering you, was regarding a housing deal in Detroit, and you knew somebody that worked for the city of Detroit. Um, you had a partnership to buy houses with a Hasidic Jew, and I'm just wondering how much of that money from that deal, did any of that go to buy any of these cars or pay any of these campaign contributions? What happened with the money from that real estate deal to buy homes in Detroit? That was back in, starting in December of 2002, and that whole um, coverage that Fox 2 had done was not an accurate coverage. They said that these were City of Detroit homes. They were not City of Detroit homes. There was an entity called the Detroit Neighborhood Development Corporation, mm -hmm. which wasn't city-run, city-owned, or anything. As a matter of fact, that was an entity that was set up under Mayor Archer by Gloria Robinson and Paul Bernard. And again, this entity was set up and they bought homes that was came from Chase Manhattan Banks, foreclosure, and they were Rimco houses. And again, they had hired under Mayor Archer um, a guy, Jim Soros. And Jim Soros was managing, charged the city $6 million, and they only rehabbed six houses. When Mayor Kilpatrick got in office, he just decided that they should just, you know, sell off the houses. And again, they were not city of Detroit houses. Henry Haygood had nothing to do with it. The story with Henry Haygood, and this is the same thing I told Fox too, had to do with Henry Haygood with city-owned houses to other group of people that wasn't wasn't me at all. Well, the deal I'm referring to was a deal that I believe began in December of 2007. And I think you stopped doing business, you and this this man stopped doing business together with you in 2008, I believe, the end December of 2008. It was money to buy homes in Detroit and then sell them to, to other buyers. You Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. Um, you've manned up. You've admitted that you, you, you pleaded guilty. You've admitted that you conspired to commit bribery and you're going to be going to prison I think in January you're supposed to report um, and you have a year to decide if you're going to work with the FBI are you going to do that? No. Um, why not? Because the FBI says in Detroit there's rampant corruption in the city of Detroit they say that um, Detroit has such a black eye in terms of how they say business is done. I feel as though that, again, if the FBI have information and they're the Federal Bureau of Investigation, they don't need me in order to find who's corrupt and who's not. But they it have, could reduce your sentence and you would get to spend more time with your four children. I think that justice will prevail and who knows what would happen. I don't think that, again, I think the penalty, again, for me cooperating, I think it's a difference between, okay, there's some corruption, who's corrupt, who approach you, who talk to you about doing something illegal, as opposed to what they wanted me to do. They wanted me to wear wire and go in into like an espionage kind of situation, and they wanted me to do like Rosendahl, is go dangle money. Like James Rosendahl. James Rosendahl wore wires. Got a reduced sentence for doing that. And then he dangled money, you know, and offered people money in order to work with him in this capacity. To me, that's entrapment. That's not, to me, the way you go about uprooting or even discovering and finding corruption. Are there a lot more people that they have not charged that you know about? No, not that I know. I don't even know the extent of their investigation. I don't know where it's going or nothing. The meeting that Fanchon Stinger drove you to, that Fox 2 has her on video as attending the meeting, this was before the sludge deal was approved. You met with commun community leaders, people in the neighborhood where the sludge plant was supposed to be. Fanchon Stinger claims that she was just your driver. Is that true? No. 
what was her role at that meeting? She didn't have a role. She just went there was Fanchin, me and another guy. And um, that was a town hall meeting that they wanted some representative from Senegal to address, to be able to address the community, whatever issues they had. And we drove there just like we went anywhere else. Why was she there, though? She was just there with me. I mean, she we wasn't were, there because of any involvement with Senegal? No. So she was your driver then? Yeah, she drove there, yes. I wouldn't say she was my driver. <laughs> do, you, do you have a valid driver's license? Yes. Do you, have a, do you have an ability to drive? Yes. What happened with those cars? Um, the, 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 the Rolls the Royce she voluntarily in turned in. in. And so, again, she didn't um, want the cars in her name again. The Ferrari, she says, that they repossessed the Ferrari. The Rolls Royce says it was a voluntary turn in. Um, you've manned up. You've pleaded guilty, as I said earlier. What do you think of her taking zero responsibility for what has happened? I think that personally, I think that I don't know what her motives and intentions were or her objectives for doing an interview, but I think if she had just taken responsibility and told the truth, I think that would have gone a lot further. Which would have been what in a nutshell? You know, I was with Rayford. I believed in him. I put my resource, time, job. I didn't care. I wanted to be with him. He stood to make a lot of money from this deal. Do you think that was a big part of it? I think it had to, yeah, it may have been a driving force. Um, but she I didn't know, know anything the, about it, I thought. No, I, she knew what I was doing with Senegal. I said she didn't know anything about anything illegal. Um, when did the relationship end? Was it before or after she was released, or I should say terminated from Fox 2 News? Mm, it was right when she was suspended. When she was suspended, did she call you? What did she tell you? She called me, and the last time I talked to her, she says, Rayford, I'm not a good person. And I said, I know. I said, but you don't deserve this. And um, we had some other conversation. She never did say. I just, and it implied to me that she was cooperating. Do you think she was objective? given your status in the Nation of Islam and the fact that you got her to do the interview with Louis Farrakhan, do you think it was right for her to interview him, given her conflict of interest with you? I think, yeah, I think anybody deserves an interview. Again, I think though Fox Shouldn't 2 has Shouldn't she have disclosed a... that to the viewers, that I am dating a man who is in the Nation of Islam? He asked me to do this interview. Well, see, I think that, again, they have a process, procedure that Fox 2 has. Again, I don't know what that is. I don't know how she got it approved. I don't know what it takes to get it approved. But I know that whatever she did, everybody, her news director, the general manager from the station. Her and, news director, Dana Hahn? I don't know. Dana Hahn, Kennedy Hahn? I don't know. I, I don't know name. any of them. But I know that there is a procedure. I know she didn't just arbitrarily just say, hey, I'm going to interview the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and just up and did it. So again, I think if you would talk to maybe someone there and find out what is the process, what did she say? Those things I don't know, but I know she got it okay. And again, again, how you do it, how much time you give an individual to be, what line of questions and how is that? I don't know if a, you know, a person who's the interviewer can do that arbitrarily or do they have to follow some kind of format or guideline?